Firstly, fuel. Fuel is, is a hidden one, and uh, you can't see how much fuel the cars are running when they're on track, but it makes a massive difference to lap time. It's about 0.35 seconds per 10 kilos of fuel in the car. For qualifying for a one lap shootout, you can basically run with about five kilos of fuel. Come back in on fumes and, uh, and get ready for your next lap. For a race, you're on about 100 kilos of fuel. So per 10 kilos of fuel, you're losing 0.35. So if someone's running 10 kilos of fuel and someone's running 50 kilos of fuel, that's just about a second and a half's worth of difference in pace. So there's a first starter, 50 kilos of fuel to 10. The typical amount of fuel that teams might use might range from 20 to 30 to 50, and some will even go more without doing a long run. Next up, engine modes. This is another hidden part. Again, we can't see from the, the times what engine modes are. The only thing we can get a hint of a clue from is the speed trap times. And uh, they can help to decode that a little bit. But the engine modes are, are pretty variable as well. And they change from engine manufacturer to manufacturer. Typically, from a very, very safe conservative mode to a fully fledged qualifying mode on the internal combustion engine alone, you can find around a second generously of performance that's a pretty big amount but then on top of that you've got the energy allocation from uh, from the hybrid part the battery which can give you another half a second and this works because in qualifying you want to deploy all your energy but in the race you don't want to deploy all your energy on just one lap you've got 66 laps and you want to keep it fairly constant keep it fairly high so when you've got someone just behind you trying to pass or you're trying to overtake someone else you can give it a big hit and then deploy your energy get the full whack of it on one straight in qualifying you want to use the whole lot in one lap and when you do it's worth about half a second for us here it's very difficult to know when they've done that apart from you'd assume on a more qualifying simulation they probably would thirdly of course another obvious one the tires five different compounds of tire the c1 to the c5 Everyone tries to work out the tyre deltas, the differences between each different compound of tyre. Generally speaking, you can assume it's about half a second per compound. From your C1, the hardest tyre, to your C5, the, the softest tyre, there's two seconds worth of, uh, of difference. We can all see them because they're marked with a, with a red, yellow or white sidewall. But if the keen eye has missed one, or when you're looking back through the lap times, it's very difficult to, uh, to remember. And that's another, another difference that can make an obvious difference to the lap time, just in pure grip from the tyres. Finally, a simple one, the DRS. The drag reduction system, the rear wing flap that can open on the straight and shut as soon as you lift off the gas or, uh, or hit the brakes. That can be worth half a second. Three tenths on the main straight, two tenths on the back straight. Again, you'd assume that uh, everyone would be running that in a qualifying mode because you run it in qualifying. But when you're looking more at the longer runs, then it's harder to tell what people are doing. You can look a little bit again at those speed trap data numbers, but lap after lap with other cars or without them and with your run plan, if you try and do a certain amount with DRS to try and simulate a bit of brake wear, which you might be putting more energy through the brakes with the DRS and the higher top speed, it's difficult to, uh, to try and sort that out as well. So all in all, there's a lot of parameters from the absolute slowest car that you could have. So 100 kilos of fuel, a safe engine mode, the hardest tire and no use of DRS to the fastest one, the qualifying spec that's on fumes with the power turned up, the softest tire and DRS. You're looking at about seven seconds difference. Of course, this is rarely ever the case in Formula One, but across that seven seconds, you've got the team's various performances. The teams will know where they are. They can try and make a guess where everyone else is, but they don't know because you don't know what particularly fuel and engine modes other people are in and uh, and it can make life difficult for us trying to guess and also the team's trying to see where they are in the pecking order and that's why you can't read into testing times too much.